working with the West to turn it over to the worst elements. But let me tell you, it just didn't mix seeing a bunch of folks that looked like they came out of an Afghan bazaar, that looked like they came out of the Middle Ages, looking wild-eyed at women wearing miniskirts and stiletto heels. I mean, there were women out there on the street that looked like they were, you know, supermodels or something in Toronto, and right next to it, there'd be like people on, on rugs smoking, you know, uh, mini hookahs and yelling at people. I mean, it was just over the top. And that's what Europe is seeing and getting freaked out about. And Europe's got to pay for it. And all I'm saying is suddenly it isn't just immigration or the best people coming here. It's space bar, folks. I mean, I've been down on the hike and bike trail and seen homeless Guatemalans catching fish with a piece of monofilament line wrapped around a Coke can that they use as the... And I'm sure they're really sweet, great, nice people. The question is, what is the government doing here and everywhere else just opening everything up? And by the way, those immigrants did, don't even know how to go get the assistance. They haven't made it to the Democratic Party facility yet and, 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 and haven't been scooped up to actually be taken off the street. They're living in the green belt. It was grandma, dad, granddaddy must have died. It was mama, it was daddy, and three kids. With a fire going over across the creek, catching fish and eating them. I mean, we're talking Grizzly Adams. Okay, fine. These are countries that live like Grizzly Adams. We're in the 21st century. Why are they bringing Grizzly Adams in, in mass? What's the reason? Because when it all unravels and melts down into depression, it is going to be a you-know-what storm. And they're mixing radical jihadists into this, and they're going to use the attacks to take everybody's liberties. And there won't be any logic of, our government opened the borders. Our government gave them the weapons. Because the public doesn't have logic anymore. Paul Joseph Watson joins us from London to break this down. France prepares for mass unrest, radicalized immigrants taking over cities. That is a huge headline. And you go through what the military says, they think this is imminent. I mean, for those that don't know, a lot of French cities are more than half Islamic now. And the radical Islamics are bullying the non-radical Islamics like they've done in Libya, Syria, Egypt, and other places into submission, Paul. And so Islam itself is being radicalized. Why is the West rolling a red carpet out to this? Well, I think one of the main reasons, Alex, is that their values are completely incompatible with, quote, you know, Western liberal democratic values, especially when it comes to free speech. I posted an image um, earlier this week on Monday, I think it was, of an ISIS flag on a toilet roll. OK, this is an image that's been out everywhere. Originally, Facebook banned it, said it was offensive to Muslims. They later backed down, restored the image. So I posted this image and said, look, this is being censored. Everybody should post this image. So it got 360,000 shares on Facebook. And ever since it was posted, literally every day, death threat after death threat after death threat of people saying, insulting someone's religion isn't covered by free speech. Well, it is. That's what free speech is all about. That's right. The radical so, Islamists are going to join with the left to selectively ban free speech of libertarians, Christians, and conservatives. That's their sick alliance. Yeah, so it's like you don't have the free speech to criticize our religion, but we have the free speech to make death threats against you for doing that. Quite the topsy-turvy world. So it's, it's been an interesting week. Um, and yeah, then we've got this story out of France, which is an intelligence source who spoke to the Telegraph, who basically said that the French army is preparing for mass unrest that will arise out of these immigrant populations obtaining weapons from Libya, given to Libyan jihadist rebels. We just lost Paul's audio. Entire neighborhoods in France. Continue, Paul. You cut out for a moment. Repeat that. Yeah, so they're going to get these weapons from Libya given to the jihadists by the French government in the first place. These immigrants, fourth generation, already, you know, disenfranchised. They're saying they're going to get control of these weapons, take over entire neighborhoods in France, and that then they're going to have to send the army in to reclaim this territory in major cities. 
And don't forget that just last week, we had this attack, this attempted attack on a train in France, whereby this guy obtains a Kalashnikov from where he visited Syria. No doubt that has a connection to it. Uh, obviously, the three individuals bravely tackle him. But then the lawyer comes out for this terrorist and says, he's not a terrorist. He just got the AK-47 because he was hungry and he wanted to get food off people. And don't call him a terrorist. That's Islamophobic. You know, Muslim guy walking around a train carriage with... Cutting AK people with box cutters and shooting at people. He's a, he's a little cupcake. Yeah, 270 rounds. But don't call him a terrorist. That's Islamophobic. So you've got this, this cultural war basically going on in all these European countries. Sweden as well, which we can get onto, which is even worse than France. But in France, they did a poll last year, found that 15% of French citizens support ISIS. 27% of French citizens aged 18 to 25 support ISIS. And of course, the vast majority of these figures are coming from these immigrant areas. Doesn't mean they're going to go out and behead people. But again, it shows that their values are completely incompatible with the values of free speech, with the values of liberal Western but democracy. But the, the controlled That's left hates Western culture so much that they're willing to use radical Islam as the sword to behead the West. I mean, this is the execution of Western culture by any means necessary by the New World Order. Yeah, and now they're even getting into positions of power. Sweden, one of their top immigration officials, is an ISIS sympathizer. She praises jihadists fighting in Syria on her Facebook page. She likes ISIS propaganda, and she's in control of the immigration system in Sweden. People who speak out against it are charged with hate crime. By the way, they even pose on their Facebooks in their jihad outfits. They, yeah. Some have even traveled to be with them. They even let people in. And then they're just praised as liberal. Well, the, the taxpayer-funded expert on Islamophobia in Sweden, Nikolai Skramo, he went on to join ISIS. He was the government expert on preventing Islamophobia. Yeah, I mean, I'm here to say it. All, all authoritarians can go to hell. I mean, I'm done with this. And I'm, that's what I mean about the left. They are a weird, mentally ill group. I mean, they'll and say that you and I wearing it. pants is sexist, but if people want to sexually mutilate women and blow up... Uh, Buddhist temples, it's okay. I mean, no, it's not. Newsweek's reporting that a suspect is in custody after active shooting incident reported at Mississippi State University. Right now, it appears like uh, it's really nothing and that no one's been hurt, hopefully. We also see a lot of hysteria where there's a backfire outside the Capitol, so they evacuated. Um, but we'll continue to track this as it unfolds. Uh, maybe serious, may not be. Going back to Paul Joseph Watson. Paul, it's very clear. They take Western values of having open, laissez-faire culture. They then expand that and tell the West, submit to everything, let us do whatever we want to you politically. Then they bring in groups that are basically Neolithic when it comes to the policies, very primitive. And they then make an alliance with the radicals of that group, a billion, 300 million Muslims, to take over regular Islam, because, I mean, most Muslims just want to have businesses and live and are pretty conservative, good people. I don't believe in Islamophobia where they're just all a bunch of bad people, but the group getting in charge, Saudi Arabia and the Wahhabists, are really horrible people. I mean, they're about as bad as it gets. They're scum. And they're always raping kids and women and running snuff rings. And they talk about because they can do it because it's infidels. I mean, they're just, uh, they make Charlie Manson look like a cupcake. And they're just out of control. And our governments are traitorous bringing them in. What's the end game? I mean, I used to think they were just going to use them for a clash of civilizations to take our liberties. But I think they've looked at the population demographics. I think, I think they've decided to join with it in the next generation and actually end Western culture as we know it, Paul. Yeah, it's definitely about that. It's about diluting culture. It's about taking away liberties. And, you know, it just came out in the UK, 330,000 immigrants per year, per year coming into the UK, a tiny island of just over 60 million population. And as you were just talking about, it came out, Tony Blair's government, that was their secret plan. It got leaked to allow all these immigrants to come in, to use them as a voting block, to use them to dilute 
basically the whole the whole culture and to put them in charge this organization i've had members of your parliament on that are liberal and they admit well i heard conservatives say it didn't believe it but they're actually putting them in charge of the social services the police you name it the government's bringing in a foreign illegal alien group to be their praetorian guard yeah and while arresting people like tommy robinson for considering to attend a meeting about a draw Mohammed cartoon contest that's literally snatching people off the street for thought crime because they may be planning to offend. And Muslims. banned Michael Savage from coming and then banned a martial arts expert from coming in. Yeah, and Sweden's even worse, though. I keep harping on about Sweden. Okay, since they opened their borders in the 70s, 1,400% rise in rapes. Feminist liberals bang on about this rape culture in the West, which is completely contrived and invented. While Sweden goes through this 1,400% surge in rapes, you go through the arrest records, about 75% of them are foreign-born immigrants, the perpetrators of these rapes. And they say it's cultural it in their countries to rape women, so it's okay. Yeah, that's just their culture, I guess, where Islamophobic for being against the raping of women now. We're not trendy, we're not liberal. So they went a step further and said, that's not trendy enough. Now some of the politicians in Sweden are saying, the returning ISIS jihadists, we need to give them jobs, give them welfare, and make the taxpayers pay for it. They're even talking about forcing Swedes to give up their garages to house these immigrants because there's a massive housing Yeah, shortage. Oh, yeah, forcing you to quarter the jihadis in your house. I, I mean, this... The left is mentally ill and wants to take over and wants to crap all over everything. I mean, I hate to use a term like that, but that's it. I mean, it's like somebody that's got dementia rubbing stuff all over their body. I mean, that, that's what they... The left has dementia. They're fascist, mentally ill scum who hate progress, hate freedom, hate wealth, help... The, they hate strength. I want to talk more about the military plan. Paul Watson's our guest. Our reporters will join us from Virginia, the little town where the tragic shooting happened yesterday coming up in the next segment and steve quell joins us we'll also have open phones with steve quells with us paul clearly though the very neocons and rhino republicans pushing islamophobia just uh, of muslims in general so we've got to invade their countries they go over destabilize the countries then put the jihadis in that's the super double cross it's so dastardly it makes the head spin and geopolitically, clearly now they're gearing up for these groups to be given the green light through their leadership to st start soft target attacks. Does the establishment really think the West will put up with continued rape, continued murder, uh, and jihad attacks, and then not call it Islamic? I mean, how are they going to get away with this? Well, they've, re they've rebranded authoritarianism. So now you see in countries like Germany, the host population are attacking the immigrants. This is where it's going to go. And the same thing's happening with this whole Black Lives Matter thing. Okay, we had the attack yesterday, which was a revenge for Charleston. It's all part of this contrived race war. But mo most people don't know, and this I'm going to write an article on this. This is basically an exclusive. This hasn't been pointed out by anyone. Okay, most members of Black Lives Matter are just useful idiots. They're not dangerous. But if you look at the three founders of Black Lives Matter, who are three militant lesbian feminists, they cite as their inspiration and in their foundational text for Black Lives Matter, this woman called Asata Shakur. She is on the FBI's most wanted terrorist list. This is a convicted cop killer who escaped to Cuba back in the 70s with the help of the weather underground. She killed police officers, and this is the woman cited as the inspiration behind Black Lives Matter. And then Lives it's the Matter. left constantly saying that libertarians, constitutionalists are going to kill cops. Well, only if they follow orders to come confiscate all the guns and have martial law. I mean, it's not libertarians and patriots that hate police. It, it is historically the communist left. And again, the left-right paradigm is false because globalists control the whole thing. But they're taking over worldwide using leftist ideologies and groups allied with super fascist radical Islam. What a sickening combo. Yeah, and remember the Obama administration has met with these Black Lives Matter leaders. This idol, this icon that they worship, Asata Shakur, 
she left the Black Panthers because it wasn't violent enough. She joined the Black Liberation Army, which killed 13 cops in the 70s. This is the foundational inspiration. 